My name is Linda Williams, and I am the executive director of Just Off Broadway Theater, and also the general manager for our anchor company, Casey Melting Pot Theater. So I was actually born in Dublin County, Missouri, which is a place that doesn't even exist anymore. At about four years old, I moved to Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, I have both of my parents still with me. And I am one of 11 children. So I'm married to Harvey Williams and we have two children. Uh, I have two son-in-laws and I have three grands. I went to high school at Manuel High School right over off of 39th Street. And I actually was at Manuel during the time that they closed the school. And so I actually transferred to Westport High School and that's where I graduated from. And I went to college. I actually enrolled in college at Lincoln University and I only stayed there for a couple of weeks uh, because I hated it. Uh, and so I came back and I took some classes at UMKC, but uh, I didn't, that was my extent with college, so. And did you do, were you a theater major in college? Oh, no, I am not a theater major. Uh, I worked in the financial industry for 28 years. And I only became involved in theater because of my husband. Uh, and he wanted to self-produce a play that he had written. And that's how I got introduced to theater. And so theater is really my second career. I've already had my career uh, in the financial industry. And that was for, like I said, for 28 years. That's what I did. The first play was Old School Ghetto Gospel. And we actually did, we've done that play twice here at Just Off Broadway. He revamped it a little bit and retitled it Old School. So we had actually come up with the name of the company and did our business paperwork and everything. So we were a company at that time. Uh, and we just came up to really self-produce a play. Just Off Broadway um, liked what we did. We started having conversations with them and it just kind of went from there. I got involved with Just Off Broadway from just trying to help them get through some growing pains or some pains that they were having at the time with board members and things like that and records and books and all of that. Uh, and after that, it just kept growing and growing until it grew into the relationship where I was on the board and then was becoming more and more involved in the theater until we really just became an anchor of the theater. And our responsibility from a melting pot perspective is really just to help Just Off Broadway thrive. And of course, they help us thrive. The thing that keeps me engaged and excited about uh, Melting Pot is that we really make our own path. We provide an opportunity for all type of artists, not just actors, but directors, stage managers, designers, uh, even people who want to work on the business side of theater we provide an opportunity that they don't typically get in other theaters in the Kansas City area. Um, and so that keeps us motivated to keep going and to keep giving people the opportunity that we, we didn't see ourselves having. And we take actors under our wings. We help them grow, we give them, uh, that we encourage them we enhance their skill set. We do classes to help enhance their skill set. The directors work, uh, you know, with them extensively um, to make them into better actors. Um, and that's something that a lot of the actors that come through our space, they're not trained. They're not professionally trained. And so they need some more coaching and some more guiding. And we see ourselves being able to do that. I would say the thing about being a woman in theater is that you have to be grounded. 
you have to know why you're doing what you do. Because being a woman, it's a lot of challenges. Being a black woman, that those challenges double and quadruple. So you have to be grounded in what you're trying to accomplish and what you're wanting to do. And you have to let that take you through the ebbs and flows that you're going to go through. Um, you have to be strong enough to know that this is what I'm in it for and this is what I want to accomplish uh, and let that be your strength. Oh, my family, my family. I have awesome sisters. I have awesome sister-in-laws. Uh, my daughters, of course, are the apples of my eye, but they are also very strong and centered women. And so I see strong women every day in every step of my life. And they're all different and they have different uh, things that they're great at, uh, but they're all very uplifting to me and they all give me um, different inspiration uh, from different aspects. So. Uh, we like to sit out on our patio. We like to have friends and family over. We like to drink, and I don't know if you can put that in there. Oh, oh apple crown. Apple crown. Yeah. So it wasn't always, but that's my drink for now. Uh, but we like to just socialize. We don't like as much to go to clubs, although we had our, our time when that was our thing. Um, but we, we really don't go to a lot of theater, but we try to catch some theater. We spend a lot of time here, so um, our time is pretty valuable to us. And so when we're at home, we're usually with family. Our family functions, we, you know, um, when we were, Harvey and I now live in our retirement home, which is a one level home. But when we lived in our family home, uh, most of the family events were at our house. And it was typical for us to have 50 people over for Thanksgiving. Whoa. Yeah. Our family, well, the house was big enough to hold 50 people uh, if you put them in every room of the house. Uh, and our family is big on doing potluck, so we would just plan, you know, what we're going to have. Everybody bring something, and um, we always had more than enough food and lots of great conversation and uh, people in every corner of the house. What's your potluck speciality? Oh, I have so many that I have had to turn a lot of the specialities over to the grant, to the children and to the grandchildren. So I actually have given things to my daughters now that they've kind of become the experts at. So at first with my youngest daughter, it was deviled eggs and a, a dessert that we call banana split pie. So those were the two things that she took over and my oldest daughter was the ham, which her dad used to actually be the ham person, but she became the ham person. It's been horrible. You know, we haven't been able to do what we love to do. Uh, so we, like everyone else, have tried to figure out how to develop some online content just to keep our audiences and our, you know, our supporters engaged. Um, we've had to, uh, I've had to be careful of, um, I, I think we have to be careful of straddling the line about trying to be about surviving and getting financial support to survive when there are so many people that are struggling right now. Uh, so we've tried to strike that balance and understand that people are, they're really, they have bigger things to be concerned about right now uh, than theater. So we have really tried to give them something 
to keep them engaged and to keep us sane so that you know we are still creating some type of content that lets us do what we you know love to do next with casey melting pot is the film division so during the pandemic the film division uh which had started about a you know a year before the pandemic actually came along it gave them a little bit of time to get their footing uh, and gave them an opportunity to work on some projects, uh, you know, that were more about film than actual performance. So I think that's going to be a huge component of Melting Pod going forward. And the other thing that's going to be a huge component is we now have Melanie uh, Walker, who is our, um, our education component of the theater and she has some things uh, up her sleeve. Uh, I don't know that I wanna announce them now, but she does have some things up her sleeve uh, where we're going to be engaging with youth in a different way. And then we also have Louis Morrow. Uh, before the pandemic, he had started the new playwright, The actually it's the new Black Playwright Festival. And we actually had um, the first session and we had a winner from that session and so the first thing that we're going to do when we come back is we're actually going to put on uh the play from the winner of that production or of that program oh awesome and then we'll turn right around and we'll have uh the next session uh, of the black playwright festival do it for love and at least my opinion in Kansas City is that you cannot survive in theater in Kansas City if you don't have a huge love for it. And it doesn't matter if you're on the stage or if you are stage managing or if you're working in an office or, uh, you know, really what component you're working in. You have to have a lot of love for this because it's hard work, uh, it's not always financially stable, um, and so you have to rely on your love for what you're doing. So I'm really excited about the possibility of the young people in our country right now. I have an 18-year-old granddaughter who uh, spent her first year uh, of college uh, at home when she was supposed to be at Howard University. And I have seen her growth and I've seen a lot of engagement and activism from these youth uh, with Black Lives Matter. And they really give me hope. They really inspire me and i really hope that they can keep forging ahead and and move this country in a direction that we should have already been in but i hope that they can sustain uh the type of effort and the type of activism that it's going to take to move the needle